All right, so here is a TA question. We're going to understand what the table is giving all of this text here. Then we will go and try to answer the questions asked, but not before we completely own the data set, completely understand it. So here we have data from the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. This data is about 43 US states and one US territory. And what is the data on? It's about them experiencing bank failures from a certain date, October 1, 2000, through December 31, 2011. Now, if I try to see this here in the table, I do see states or territories mentioned here. I see bank failure by year and then the years mentioned and then there's a total column. So if I try to read California, for example, then it had one bank failure in oh this this combined period from 2000 to 2006. It had no bank failure in 2007, five failures in 2008, so on. You read it till you get to 39 total failures in this period in California. So that's how we're simply reading all of the different columns here. Now let's read further. It says that 21 other states and territories, states or territories that are grouped together in one row. Where is this? What are they talking about? Yes, I see this last row here, 21 other states or territories. These grouped together, what about them? Each experienced less than five bank failures in the period shown. So in the entire period, less than five each of them. So that means total less than five for such a long period of time, maybe because the number is so small for them, they have been grouped together. Even combined, they have just 43 in total. But the others, if you see Alabama, for example, has six total, that alone is more than five. And, and that's why it has a space here. I even see fives here, which is fine. So everything else, which is below five, you know, four or three, two, one, zero, all of them would be here combined together. So now I understand what this is about. I am sure that these values, this is 43 different places in number, and then all of the remaining 21 are here. Okay, now let's see what the question is asking. We will come here. It says for each of the following statements, select yes, if, okay, when are we selecting? Yes, if the statement can be shown to be true using the information provided. So can be shown to be true, simply put, if this statement is true, based on the information. That's all it's saying. So based on everything that you have, just see if a certain statement is true, you'll mark yes. If not, you'll mark no. So let's analyze these one at a time. I am going to look at only statement one first. And this is statement one. Let's read. Of the individual states listed, okay, individual states, you already know that we have 43 of those individual and then there is a group that I have of 21. I'm not considering the group right now. That's what individual means. Okay, let's read further. Of the individual states that experienced at least one bank failure in 2008. So you will look at the column for 2008 and the value should be at least one greater than equal to one. And okay, another condition, at least 10 bank failures in 2010. So you look at the 2010 column and this should be at least 10. So you are talking about those states that had both of these features and only the individual states. Then what about these? Read it as a big chunk of these states that experienced one and two no more than three states. No more than three means less than equal to three. That's the max you can go. No more than three states experienced declines in bank failures from 2010 to 11. This is translation heavy, go nice and slow, nothing is hard here. So first of all, they are talking about all of the states that do satisfy these two conditions, right? Then they're saying that out of all of these states, all of these that do satisfy these conditions, no more than three, that is less than equal to three stages, uh, states will experience a decline from 2010 to 2011. So a decline from 10 to 11 means you should have a smaller number in 2011 compared to 2010. So only after I find these states, can I go and then see where the decline is happening? And then I will have to count how many is this happening for? If it really happens for less than equal to three, I will mark yes, because this statement would be true. But if it happens for more than three, then this will be false. So let's take all of this to Excel where we can really use our table. We can interact with it, sort as you will be able to do in the test. All right, so here I've written the approach very clearly. We first will find 2008 and 2010 values and find which states do satisfy both of these conditions, greater than equal to one and greater than equal to 10. Then from those, we will see how many also show a decline as you go from 10 to 11. Then our answer was based on this, how many being greater than three or less than equal to. So solid approach. Let's start finding these one by one. Say this is condition number one, 2008, at least one. So what I'll do is I will sort this by 2008 
column and at least one is all of those values where this is greater than or equal to 1 so it's everything from here on so it is these states that i have here let me highlight them properly perfect now at this stage notice one thing this also has this 21 other states column the ones that were grouped together remember but my question here this statement only talked about individual states that means i am not going to include this one so just ignore this let's de-highlight it and perfect so here i have taken care of only the first condition 2008 at least one now i also have to have another condition which is 2010 this should be at least 10 so you're really seeing among these only you no know, now you will not go beyond these because anyway both conditions had to be satisfied so for these just simply read the 2010 values and see where is it that you have that greater than or equal to 10 so i'll highlight those this this you can again sort and get them all together but this way at least i have all of my uh, yellows together and i am not going to take this because this is not one of the states i have so this is out perfect but before we move on i have an important note for you i said you could sort by the 2010 column also so all of these values 16 29 the ones that are greater than or equal to 10 will come together but the problem with that will be that it will separate these states that we got together these states are a lot more in number they came by us sorting the 2008 column right so it is better to keep this sorted as is by the 2008 column because this is a bigger chunk that has come together and for these values that are just four or five in number it's just easier to eyeball this so you have to decide which one you will sort to bring together and which one you will just eyeball usually you choose sorting for the one that has a lot more values to take care of and where you have something so few in number eyeballing is enough okay let's move on so then how many do i have where it is at least 10 i have four such states and now among these four states so i have found four such states among these i have to see how many show show a decline from 2010 to 11. That's right. 10 to 11, yes, there is a decline. This is number one. This 29 to 13, yes, there is a decline. 12 to 4, yes, there is a decline. 21 to 23, no, that's not a decline. It's an increase. So then how many show you the decline? It is exactly three. And because exactly three also fits here in less than equal to three, this statement is a yes. It is, it is something that you can prove true based on the information. So I mark yes for this one. See how easy it was to ultimately read the data because we were so clear on what we had to do. If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. With this now, let's look at the second statement. Here we go. Across the US states that experienced more than 45 bank failures in the time frame displayed. So this is talking about the total, right? So you will take the total column, you will sort it. And after you sort it, you will see all of the values that are greater than 45. You'll count all of these. Across these, what is it saying further? less than a third of all bank failures that occurred during the time frame displayed again bank failures that occurred during the time frame displayed it's still talking about the total so less than one third of the total occurred in 2010 okay so i can very easily write this in plain english we are saying across all of these u.s states which means for all of these states when i get you know greater than 45 for the total for all of these less than one third of the total less than one third of the total this is your failures in 2010 this is what the statement is saying now i know in my table i have a column for 2010 failures i have a column for total and i simply have to see whether this is indeed true for all of the states that satisfy this condition so two steps i'm going to follow first i'll find everywhere that this is greater than 45 second for those i will check the failures and the total column together let's see and go to the excel 
and here we are so first job find where the total is really more than 45 so i'm going to sort by the total column so that all of these come together more than 45 okay it's just these three let me make sure it doesn't include the group yes this is all three where i have more than 45 now i have to see whether for all of these failure in 2010 2010 column is here failure in 2010 is it always one third less than the total, which is these values? That's what I have to check. So I simply have to check it for three sets of values. It's not too much work. You have your failure in 2010 and let's fix this. And you also have the totals. So I'm going to see now 16. Is it less than one third of 50? It is. Why? Because I can also see this in a simpler way as three times the failures in 2010 is less than total. It's easier to multiply than divide, right? So three times of 16 is 48 because 48 is indeed less than 50. We are sure that this thing is true for this one state for Illinois. Next, if I see what is three times of 29, that is more than 60 for sure. This is going to be close to 90 something. So it is not less as we wanted. So this state is out. 21, three times of that is 63. And that is indeed less than 76. That's it. See how I did not even bother finding the exact three times of this because I could see it's close to 30 times three, which is about 90. So you have to be wise about where you spend your energy and where you don't. Anyway, I didn't even have to check for the third one after I got across here. Why? Because I wanted to see whether this thing is true for all such states. So one failure, one place where it's not true is enough for me to reject the statement. We'll go and mark no. Here we are and we're done. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, in the table analysis modules in the GITA course, we teach you how to get comfortable with the table so that you can process it in the most efficient way. We serve more than 65 specially curated questions at the right progression so that you learn various aspects of the table analysis questions, including the process skills of inference, translate and visualize. Thus, throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. Finally, let's look at the third statement. We again have to see if that's true or not based on the information. This is the total number of bank failures, which is one column I know, in the 44 US states and territories. Why 44? Remember, they talked about 43 states and one US territory. So nothing has changed here. So total number included grew from 2009 to 2010. So I do have a column for 2009. I do have it for 2010, but I have it state-wise. I don't have the total. Now, right now, it's trying to make me come Compare the total for 2009 with the total for 2010. And it says it grew from here to there. That means my 2010 total should be greater. If that really happens, I will mark yes. But if it doesn't happen, then I will mark no. Now I have to see how I'll get the total, but let's go to our data first. All right, so here we are. Now, since we're comparing the totals, there are two ways. First is that you really do find the total for 2009, 2010, and then compare them, but that might be too much work. So here, what I've done is I've just sorted by the 2009 column. So I really have the values in ascending order now. And I want to see how the values are behaving for a state by state basis. Where is there an increase? Where is there a decrease? What I'll see is I will add up all of the increases together to get the total increase that is happening in all of these states combined. Similarly, I will combine all of the decreases to see the total decrease that's happening. And then I will compare these two to see whether overall increase is more or decrease is more. If increase is more, then yes, 2010 is, is greater, the total. But if decrease is more, then it's the reverse. So let's just see how the changes are happening. Notice it's a plus four, then a plus two, because I'm, I'm writing the plus to show that it's an increase. All of these here are plus values till you get the first reduction here. And then this is just simply zero. And then again, you have a plus one. These are very, very small changes in most of the cases, as I'm seeing right now, very minor changes here. But OK, this is big, it's slightly big. So three, this is one again, really small zero. OK, now I have one big change. 
it's a plus eight. The bigger a change is, the more impact it will have, right? So this is your plus one, then your minus one, and so on. For now, I should try to see what is happening with the bigger values. They are going to decide the movement more. I can be specific by checking for all of these values, but just to get a high level idea, I'll take the biggest ones first. So maybe where the difference is at least four, you know? So it's going to be this, and where else do I have a big difference? I can see it here from 14 to 29, it's a plus 15. Then I see a big drop here also this is a drop by five so negative five next one also again it's reduction by five and the last one is reduction by four so i think we've covered all of the cases where it was at least four of a difference now if i see the increase is still here it's plus four plus eight that's plus 12 and plus 15 that makes it a plus 27 and if i see the decreases at, at this stage the big decreases at least then these are the three that i have and it's going to be negative 14. so from the big values it seems like the increase is more powerful than the decrease because if you see the rest of your table it is full of increases and decreases both but it seems that i have a lot more pluses than i have minuses so for example if i do this one also okay this one should also go in my uh, decreases because this is also by four if I include this here with my black values, it's going to be negative 18. Still, the increases are more powerful. Besides that, as I said, the other situations, I see some minuses, some pluses, but I have a lot more instances where things are growing than where they are being, they're coming down. So really, your decreases are first of all less frequent. Here I have a decrease, then here I have a decrease, then it comes straight here down below. And then for the last three here. So I have small, small, small increases more in frequency and the big values also were more of an increase than decrease. So this does give me a clear idea that overall this thing has increased. There's more of an increase than decrease. And so it is a yes. Now, in these questions, if you feel less confident with estimation or with just reading the big values, then you're free to add them. You have the calculator, but you don't really need to if you draw inferences like I did. Decide about the big terms separately, then observe the smaller terms, and then see that even the smaller ones are more positive than they are negative. So that's how we can be smart about how data is to be used. So when I come here, I can say a yes for this one, that yes, it did grow. And that's it. So what all did we do here in this question? Before going into the statement, we were careful to understand how the data is presented, what are the values, especially understanding what this last row was about, because this is something which was exactly used in our first statement when it talked about individual states. This is where we had to know what's the difference between individual and that group. So after that, we just kept going to the data. We kept finding out whether some statement is always true or not. And we never jumped into the data without first deciding what our approach would be. So for example, here we decided that we are going to first look at these two conditions, we'll find out the states that work, then we're going to read their 2010 and 11. That clarity helped us navigate these statements really, really quickly. Not just this one, all of them. In fact, here also you see our approach was decided before we went into the data. So this is something you should always do. First, own your data set completely, understand it thoroughly. Then when you come to the question, decide on what you're going to do, what is your approach, then go to the table, be smart with how you use data, and you will have no trouble.